Today we're going to be going very deep down the signal and mobile coin rabbit hole and I highly suggest going and reading all of the sources I leave in the description down below for yourself and if there's anything you want to correct me on, please go and do so because I don't want to see more misinformation being spread around. If you missed the news, the Signal chat app has decided they want to introduce some method for their users to transfer money between other users of the chat app. Now, being a privacy focused application, they're obviously not going to have bank transfers being their main selling point. What they're going to do instead is use some sort of private method such as a privacy coin. Now you may expect them to go with something well established like say Monero or Zcash. These are projects that have established user bases, are already trusted projects and no one thinks they're really doing anything sketchy. But what they've decided to do instead is work with a very new project, a project that has only had a mainnet coin since December known as mobile coin. Now a lot of people have already talked about why it makes absolutely no sense for Signal to introduce some method to transfer money because it just doesn't fit with the goal of the application. You have a chat app, the chat app should be a chat app. If you want to go and transfer money, there are already established tools for this, whether that be Venmo or the Cash app, or if you want to go transfer some crypto privately, you could transfer Monero using something like the Cake Wallet. But I want to focus on mobile coin itself because this project, besides just being very new, has an incredibly sketchy history. Now, this right here is supposedly the original white paper from mobile coin and most of it is fairly normal white papery stuff so we have things like the motivation of the project the experience of using the project how it actually works how it's designed things like that nothing really too crazy but if we go down a bit we'll see some of the team so we have joshua goldbard as the ceo nothing weird there and then moxie marlin spike as the cto now if you recognize the name Moxie Marlin Spike, that's because Moxie is also the founder of Signal. Now, if we go down a bit more, there's some other weird stuff that's actually happening here. So we have some information about the pre-sale. So how many mob tokens, mob is the name of the mobile coin token, will be issued? 250 million, this supply is fixed at issuance and can never increase. So they have a 250 million coin pre-mine. This is every coin that will ever exist and you cannot mine coins. And also during this pre-sale, they had a private sale where they sold 37.5 million coins. Being a private pre-sale, we don't actually know who owns the coins. Now, the reason why I said this is supposedly the original white paper is because over on Reddit, Joshua Goldbard, the CEO of Mobile Coin, claims that this is a fake white paper. Now, a fake white paper is nothing strange in the crypto world, but it gets really weird when someone asks this question. Do you have any prior online references talking about the fake white paper being circulated? Did you ever mention this before today? Today being one day ago. And Josh responds by saying, Mobile Coin did not respond to any inquiries or public discussions about Mobile Coin until after our launch in December. This is December 2020, and the paper has existed since 2018. Since then, we have been very active. So if I understand correctly, you cannot point to any prior evidence of you claiming the white paper is fake, despite it being circulated online for three years now. I find it very weird. And he follows it up by saying that he didn't want to comment on the coin prior to its launch because that could potentially condition the market. Now, I find it really, really weird that there was a paper floating around for three years that basically discredits your entire project, but you didn't want to comment on it. I get the not conditioning the market thing, but having this white paper float around looks really, really bad for your company. Now, I do have a web archive link to the actual white paper. This one was on the mobile coin website. Basically, the only difference is the formatting and the last couple of pages are missing. So as we can see, it still has all of the same stuff about like transaction privacy and SGX and the design of it. All of that is exactly the same. The only difference is it's missing these last couple of pages that talk about the team and also the pre-sale. But he also commented on the pre-sale as well in a different comment. While the pre-sale wasn't a part of the real white paper, it is something that actually did happen. So as he says here, investors own a minority of coins in our investor sale, which was the pre-sale. We sold 15% of our rights to our ERC-20 for 30 million in 2018. And 37.5 million is 15% of 250 million. 
Now, that point was never being questioned. It's just the OP of this thread did their maths wrong and thought it was 25% rather than 15%. The part where this gets really, really weird and they're kind of lying is mobile coin owns a minority of coins and plans to use those coins to incentivize the ecosystem through a combination of sales of coins to provide financing for development and giveaways to encourage participation. Now, as we established earlier, the coin isn't mineable. This is something that has been confirmed in separate threads. Mobile coin is a pre-minted coin. There will only ever be 250 million in existence. So prior to them being available for public sale, who owned the rest of the coins then? Well, as he says here, over 50% of the coins are available at buymobilecoin.com right now. Coins will also be given out from this pool once the procedures for determining how to do this in a compliant fashion are signed off by our council. Okay, I'll take your word for it that Mobile Coin Inc. doesn't own a majority of the tokens, but let's find out who actually owns buymobilecoin.com. So if we go down to the bottom of the page, thankfully they actually go and tell us. As we can see, it's owned by Mobile Coin Limited. Are you actually telling me that Mobile Coin Inc. and Mobile Coin TS Limited are not directly connected? Are you actually telling me that you gave potentially 85% of your tokens away to a separate entity? Of course that's not what happened. These are both owned by the same organization and Mobile Coin TS Limited just exists to sell the token, but it's still Mobile Coin owning a majority of the token. I have no idea why he's lying here. There is absolutely nothing to gain from it. Now, the last point that's mentioned is Moxie is a technical advisor and has never been an officer at Mobile Coin. This is a factual inaccuracy. And I went and looked back at articles from back when Mobile Coin is first announced back in 2017. And this does seem to be the case. He is just a technical advisor and was never actually the CTO of the company. There is one more weird thing about this fake white paper, and that is that one of their own technical documents, this one right here, actually references it as a source. So if we go way down to the footnotes at the bottom here, if we go down to footnote number 70, we have this one right here, Joshua Goldbard and Moxie Marlin Spike, Mobile Coin, November 2017. This one will take us to a different link, but if we go to it, as we can see, this is the exact same fake white paper that we saw before. Now, if this is actually a fake white paper, this shows a certain level of incompetence. And the CEO did actually mention this over on the Reddit thread as well. So as he says down here, where someone actually called him out saying it actually is a real white paper, Josh says, unfortunately, that's an error. Co-referenced the fake white paper. And someone responds to that by saying, but he accessed the white paper. So he accessed the fake white paper, didn't think it was fake, and then just put it in their technical documentation. While this is a mistake anyone could make, it's not a mistake that should be left there. Now that was just the white paper, and the rabbit hole goes much, much deeper from here. And his claim is that Mobile Coin is actually based on the Monero project, which by itself wouldn't be a bad thing. It's an open source project. Anyone can go and use their code. The problem is that Mobile Coin seems to be trying to hide the fact that they're based on Monero, going so far as acting as if they're based on another project. So that project is another project by the name of CryptoNote which isn't technically lying because the Monero project is actually based on CryptoNote. The problem that happens though is that Mobile Coin's feature set is very strangely similar to Monero when it's not actually based on it, having things like Ring CT and sub addresses and bulletproofs, and the CryptoNote project hasn't been developed for about five years. So it seems really weird to base a project on a dead code base. Don't get me wrong, it's not like they've done no work at all because regardless of whether they're based on CryptoNote or Monero, they have still rewritten the project in Rust. And then to top it off, when Ricardo Spagni went on Twitter to say that the Mobile Coin project was based on Monero, the founding engineer of Mobile Coin had this to say, Monero, literally the worst code base I've ever seen, not a single line of that in Mobile Coin. Now, none of that is illegal. The founding engineer can be a jerk on Twitter, and if Mobile Coin actually is based on Monero, they don't have to give them credit for it. But if it is based on Monero, what it does say is they are willing to actively lie to their users. 
that's enough for speculation. Now, I want to talk about something that is 100% true, and that is that this project has only had a mainnet since December 2020. And as soon as this partnership was announced, the price shot up about 100x. This is a really, really dangerous coin to be transferring money in because by the time you actually get the coin, it's probably going to have its value completely shifted. And this isn't just the case with mobile coin. This is the case with doing any crypto payments right now as well. Everything is very, very volatile and transferring money like this is just not a good idea. Now, Signal's claimed reason for going with mobile coin is because it's quick providing three to five second transactions and also because it requires very little storage, making it suitable for a mobile device. However, things like Cake Wallet demonstrate that Monero, if you just use it with zero confirmations, is also incredibly quick as well. And it's done. Now, zero confirmations does mean it will be less secure, but for daily small transactions like this, it's perfectly fine. But it's also no less secure than mobile coin where everything is centralized. Just having one confirmation on a decentralized network like Monero is going to be worlds apart what mobile coin could ever offer you. Honestly, mobile coin would be just as secure if it was just a SQL database. And there is one more damning point for mobile coin, and that is that it has a hard-coded transaction fee hard-coded at 10%. So right now the transaction fee is about 56 or so cents. So if it was at the same price as Monero, it would have about a $2.70 transaction fee compared to Monero at about 4 cents. Now the reason why it's so high, even though there's no miners and no one on the network gets compensated for using it, is because all of the transaction fees go to the Mobile Coin Foundation, and then this money is used to fund non-profit digital freedom organizations. Which of all the uses for it is a perfectly valid use, but I just want to transfer money to my friend, why do I need to pay a 10% transaction fee? There are talks to reduce it to something sensible, but this will require a vote inside of mobile coin. Now, as we know, the SEC loves crypto. They love crypto so much that they keep taking projects to court because they can't leave them alone. Now, Bruce Schneier, a famous American cryptographer, puts this really well. So he says that it's that adding a cryptocurrency to an end-to-end -end encrypted app muddies the morality of the product and invites all sorts of government investigative and regulatory meddling by the IRS, the SEC, FinCEN, and probably the FBI. And governments like mine are already looking for reasons to ban Signal, so having a end-to-end -end encrypted chat application that also has a way to send people money privately, that seems to open up some investigative doors, whether that be for selling illegal narcotics over Signal or human trafficking, this is not something that Signal wants to have on their back. Not to mention that Telegram already did this and failed really, really hard. So the difference with the Telegram situation with the Gram token is that Telegram themselves were the ones actually developing the coin, whereas in this case, you have a separate entity that manages the coin. Separate, but the technical advisor is also the founder of the partner. I'm going to say it's separate. So the SEC basically forced them to shut down after years and years of legal trouble, and I wouldn't be surprised if the SEC steps in here as well. But they are certainly trying to make sure that doesn't happen by banning US users from using mobile coins. So as they say over in their terms of use, mobile coins are not offered or sold to US persons or entities or other prohibited persons regardless of their location. Purchasers of mobile coins may not transact, transfer, or trade mobile coins in the United States or with US persons or entities or persons or entities present in the United States. And I am 100% sure that zero US entities will ever own the token and this will somehow stop the SEC from actually investigating this. Of course it won't because this is the internet and there are no borders on the internet. Now up until a couple of days ago, the Signal server GitHub hadn't received a single update in about a year. However, Signal was still receiving new features, so what they were doing was development behind closed doors, which isn't illegal, but it's a really, really bad look for a FOSS project, and now that all of this has gone public, it's very clear why they've actually done this. So if you want to go see people actually talking about this, here is an issue that was made saying that there hadn't been a single update since April 22nd, 2020. The reason why they didn't push an update 
is probably because they didn't want people to freak out months ago when they started introducing the payment system, because judging by the reaction on Twitter and Reddit and their forums and everywhere else talking about Signal, nobody wanted this functionality except for Moxie. And it's not like their other projects have been that public either. This is the payments update for Signal Android, and this one commit has 19,000 additions. There's nothing weird about having a dev branch and doing things separately from the master branch, but what it seems like they've been doing is doing development in a private repo, and then when they're ready, pushing it all up. Once again, this is not illegal, and I'm not trying to make the argument that Signal is somehow compromised, but it is a really bad look for a FOSS project to not be open about the code they're writing. If you want to have private transactions, there are already existing projects that exist, whether that be Monero or Zcash or any of the other privacy tokens out there. You don't need to go and make this new token because it's supposedly better on mobile, where it can be very easily demonstrated that one, it isn't better on mobile, it's about the same, and two, no one actually cares about having to wait two minutes just to transfer some money. In fact, people using Signal would probably prefer it to be more secure. Now, Moxie and Signal do claim that they don't own any of the pre-sale tokens, but there is absolutely no way to confirm this. All we have is their word. I am not saying that mobile coin absolutely is a scam, but I am saying it is a very, very sketchy token, and be very careful if you decide to use it. I have absolutely no idea how long this video is going to be, but that took a lot of research to put together, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I think that's going to be everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie Joseph, Mitchell Peter, the Stephen, Tony Sushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you'd like to watch it somewhere that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.